Hey guys, welcome back to another video of me solving a coding interview question. So today's question is finding the closest value in a binary search tree. And this question is on leak code, but I can't access it because I don't have leak code premium. So I'm going to use VS code for this. Yay. I think I am going to get leak code premium later, but for now, I think it's just too much money and it's not worth it. So I might get it later. Who knows? So what is a binary search tree? A binary search tree uh, from this website is a data structure. It's basically like a sorted binary tree where uh, at every node, the value of that node is greater than all the values to the left subtree, but it's either less than or equal to all the values to the right subtree and its two children nodes are either binary search tree nodes themselves or they're null or none nodes. So for example, 30 to the left of it, we've got 15 and seven and 22, all of which are less than 30. And to the right of 30, we've got 60, 45, 75, and all of that. So this is an easy question, most likely because the binary tree is already sorted. So how do we solve this? So since we don't have leak code, I am just going to run you through the algorithm and do some sample code and uh, VS code. And I'm pretty sure it's going to work. I'm very sure it's going to work. So let's dive into it. So the example was 30, 15, 60, 7, 25, 45, 75. 17 and 27. Okay, so this is going to be very similar to the other questions that we had to visualize as geometry, where the left has lesser values, the right has greater values, kind of like that, right? So let's say we have a target value of, let's say, 65, right? So we want to find the closest value to 65 in this binary search tree. So this is definitely going to be 60 right here. So what do we do? So we're going to use recursion. There are actually two ways to solve this. I think I'm going to make this a two part series where I talk about recursion, this first part, and then the second part, I talk about the iterative solution. Well, let's just go through the recursive solution. So we have the root node, which is 30, and we're going to declare a variable called closest. This is going to represent the closest value to 60 in the binary search tree, and we're going to initialize it to the max value, like whatever is the max value in the language, initialize it to that. Then when we get to 30, the root node, when we're iterating through, when we're recursively going through the nodes of the binary search tree, when we get to 30, we're going to calculate the difference between the target, which is 6 to 5, and the current max value, and the target, which is 65, and the value of the current node, and which one of them is lesser, which one of those values come out lesser, we're going to replace the closest value to that. So say, for example, we compute the difference of 65 minus the max value, right? The absolute value of that. It's definitely going to be greater than 65 minus 30. So we replace closest to, instead of max, now closest would now be 30, right? Because 30 is definitely closer to 60 than the max value, okay? Then we keep recursively going through the other notes. But now we have the value of the current node we're on, and we also have the target value that we're searching for. So at this point, we're going to ask, is the target value less than the current value? If it is, then we search 
on the left subtree because we know that all the values lesser than the current nodes value is on the left subtree. Otherwise, if the value, the target value, which is 65, is greater than the current nodes value, which it is, all we do is search on the right subtree, okay? And then we uh, pass in 60, we pass in tree, the right, and that's gonna be 60. And when we get to 60, we do the same thing, computing the difference, and then 60 is gonna be closer to 65, so we replace closest to 60, and we keep doing it until we get to the final answer, okay? So let's dive into the code for this. All right. So the very first thing we wanna do, I don't have a function, so I'm just gonna say public, integer since we want to return an integer and let's call this closest value in BST and this is going to be it's going to take in a binary search tree let's call it tree and it's going to take in an integer of target that's a target value and a double this could also be an integer of closest that's the closest value and if you have another function let's assume that this double is initialized to the highest double value like double the max value right if we have another function we're definitely going to initialize we're going to like a main function, then we're gonna set this closest to the double dot max value, okay? So at this point, we wanna check if the binary search tree is a null binary search tree, and how are we gonna do that? We're gonna check if the root node is null, and if it is, so we basically just say if tree is equal to null, which means there's nothing in there, then we wanna return zero. Because logically, if you look at it, zero is the closest value to nothing so we return zero otherwise we want to calculate calculate the difference between the target and the current node current nodes value so we say if math.abs that's getting the absolute value so the reason why we're doing math.abs is just in case we have negative values in the binary search tree we want to make sure we're taking care of that condition too so if math.abs of target minus closest is greater than closest with a t is greater than math.abs target minus tree that value that's the current nodes value if the difference between the current closest and the target is greater than the difference between the current nodes value and the target then we know the closest should definitely be the current nodes value so that's tree the value because the difference is smaller okay so you could also write this as closest equals uh, math that abs basically the same thing if this condition is met right then you want to return tree dot value Otherwise, you just want to return, what do we want to return? We just want to maintain closest, okay? Now, this could work, it's almost the same thing, but this is more, it's exactly the same thing, but this is more readable. So I'm gonna comment this out and say, you could also do it like this, okay? So now that we're here, what we have to do now is to determine what node to check next. Do we want to check the left child node or do we want to check the right child node? Remember, in our algorithm, we said 
if the target value is greater than the current node's value, then we want to search in the right subtree. Otherwise, if it's less than the current node's value, then we want to search in the left subtree because we know all the values to the left subtree are less than the current node's value. So what we do, we say if target is less than tree value, then we search on the left subtree. But we just don't want to pass in tree.left into this function if there is no left subtree. If you look at seven, there are no left and right subtrees for seven. And that's correct. That's exactly one of the properties of a binary search tree because you could either have children, which are binary search tree nodes themselves, or null nodes. So what if the tree to left, what if it doesn't exist, right? We just don't want to pass in the left subtree. So what we do is we make sure that the tree to left is not equal to null. And when this condition is met, then we want to call this function in itself, which is recursion. And instead of passing the tree, now we want to pass in tree the left. We want to pass in the same target. Target doesn't change. And we want to pass in the new closest. Okay. Uh, this should be return. Uh, I think I'm going to take it out so I could explain why I did return later. So we do the same thing for the right subtree. Copy and paste this. If target is greater than tree that value and tree that right, the right child node is not equal to null. Then we want to pass in tree that right, target and closest. Otherwise, if none of those conditions were met, then we just want to return the integer value of closest. So remember, closest is double. So we want to convert it to an integer before returning it. And that's it. Say for example, right, we get to this point. We get to this point where we have the target greater than the tree value. And we call this node, we call this, we call this function. And when calling this function, it comes right onto this point and there is no return value. There's nothing to return. And this is an integer function. It has to return something. So we want to return whatever value we get from calling this function. So return that. So that's pretty much everything. But what we want to do now is what if we have a main function? We want to call this closest value in binary search tree function in the main function. So that would go like this. Let's say this is the main function, public static void main String args. This is a standard main function in Java. Oh. Okay. Then we say ant closest value is equal to this function right here, which is closest value in BST. And what are we passing in? We're passing the BST tree. Let's say tree. Let's assume it's already there, right? And we press in the target. That would be, let's say 60. And double closest. That's going to be double dot max value. And that's it. So this should give us the closest value in the binary search tree. Now let's check the time and space complexity of this algorithm for Time complexity, what are we doing again? We are uh, 
recursively going through the nodes in the binary tree and we want to check which node is lesser, which node. So that's O of n. And the space complexity. Are we storing anything? No, we're not. But there's this recursive call that we make in the function. So the way recursion works is that it adds calls to the call stack and it keeps popping them off the call stack and that counts as extra space, except in cases of till recursion. You should definitely look that up. But this is not till recursion because the recursive call is not the very last thing we're doing in the function. So we're definitely using extra space and that extra space would be O of N. So time is O of n and space is also O of n. So that's it for this video guys. Uh, if you like this type of content you should definitely subscribe. Uh, I'm always down for discussions in the comment section. If you feel like there are ways we can make this algorithm better, let me know. And also smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and share this video with your friends and family who might be preparing for coding interviews or just have an interest in code. And also I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.